Hi there, welcome to my electricity guide for RimWorld. I am Icon and we will talk about all things electric in this video. I will guide you through the basics of electricity usage in the beginning, then we're going to talk about the various methods of energy production in the game, and in the last part of the video I will talk about my hints, tips and tricks and thoughts about power grid management in general. So let's get started right away. To use electricity, you will have to research the electricity technology first. Well, that sounds really obvious, but it's worth mentioning if you're starting out with a tribal playthrough, you won't have this, uh, this technology to begin with. And all things electric begin with this technology. You unlock the chem fuel generator, the wood generator and the wind turbine to begin with, alongside with a lot of other gadgets you can use from there on. Electricity is necessary to power certain workbenches like the smithy or the cooking stove and also to power up furnitures like lamps and temperature regulators like coolers and heaters. So as you can see, oh I forgot one thing also used for security measures like your turrets. As you can see, electricity is a very, very versatile instrument. So we're, we find all the tools for power in the power menu. And there we're going now to build a wood fire generator first because I consider this as one of the most fundamental things in the game. So the wood fire generator is accompanied by the chem fuel power generator. They both produce the same amount of energy, they just use different fuels. Chem fuel you need to produce or buy that, whereas wood you can just fell down some trees and use it. Just right click it, prioritize refueling and off you go. So. The only real difference between these two generators is quite simple. The higher, highly refined fuel lasts for a way longer time, whereas the raw fire, uh, wood fire will burn out faster and you will have to pump in more, fire, uh, more fuel more often, so it makes more work. But you see here, that thing produces 1000 watt of power, which we can use now for our workbenches. Let's quickly paste, around, uh, paste a few walls around this. In case you're wondering, we're using the god mode here to make this tutorial a little bit smoother. Usually you don't build like that, but you obviously know. And now let's send tutorial girl over here and let her build the roofs. So now we got our first power generators online. When you turn on the power menu, you see these blue lines. These are power conduits. You can just connect them via drag and drop. And you, as you see here, they automatically connect with each other. You can pull power conduits through walls, through the ground, where they are destroyable though. If they are in a wall, first the wall gets destroyed, then the power conduit usually, but there's no guarantee. It's like 50-50. Sometimes the power conduit dies first, sometimes this, the, the raider attacks the wall. You can't really be sure about it. But generally said, your power conduits are more safe in the wall. Also, they have a negative beauty rating, so people don't like to see them. Now, after that's been done, we have power lines accessible. Now we place down some example machinery. Let's go for the biofuel refinery. And as you see here, there's this yellow cord in designating how far away the power source can be. It's just like we have power, we have power cables and you, or you also can see the cables run on the floor. If you really look closely, let's see if I can show it to you you'll see that uh, there's a slight black line running to the generator. That's uh, like a power cord plugged into the actual power conduit. All right, these are the ultimate basics. The only thing you can, which is worth talking about now is that you can flick the switch on these items, like here. You have to give the command and then you can turn these items off. You see how much power is in your power grid on this screen. And this tells you the production of all connected power suppliers in a certain power conduit group. That's it. That's how you use electricity in this game. That's roughly how you produce electricity in this game. So now let's 
get into the more detailed things. We were already talking about the, uh, the generators here. So these are among the most basic and simple ways of producing energy. But you also unlock the wind turbine when you get access to the electricity tech. Unlike the generators, wind turbines need no fuel, which is really awesome, but they have another downside. As you see here, these white squares designate a zone where the wind turbine wants to produce energy. And as you see here, it is blocked by the oak trees, which are standing here. You can now cut these plants and uh, let's center over here. But there's one big problem with this. As you see here, it's now open. Trees will regrow. You have no control over that. There are two viable tricks to change that. Either you place down growing zones into these zones here and just sow out some crops. Crops will hinder the trees from growing. So basically this way, this is a foolproof method to create yourself a nice wind park, which is always un not blocked. Or the other method you can use would be to build the, that wind turbine and just place down some tiles. I really like to use flagstones for this because they are really cheap and you can just place them down like that. Oops, that was not wide enough. And these also block the trees from growing. That's a decent method if you have no use for the agriculture or no colonists which are good at plants, too many resources to spend, whatever might be the case. If you don't want crops, that uh, if you don't have any use for crops whatsoever, you can also just plant down flowers. They, they do the same trick. So wind power, as you see here, is random. The yellow bar here designates how strong the wind blows and across the day the wind turbine produces a random amount of energy. Energy is roughly is, uh, going between 0 and 3.5k um, on the wind turbine and to really use it it is very unreliable without further technologies accompanying it. But you need no extra resources for that and it's just working all day long. And as you see here, it's very synergistic with your agriculture. These are really, really powerful arguments for the usage of wind turbines. But always remember, when you build new power suppliers, they have to be connected with the grid un unless you don't want them to be used. So you can also build Sever, uh, separate grids from each other, that's also possible. But I'd only say do it only if you want, if you have a certain good reason for it. Okay, now we know about these technologies. Now we have worked through all these electricity things. Let's talk about batteries next. Batteries are simply said storage zones for power. You place down a battery and as soon as it's connected to the grid, it starts to, starts to store a certain amount of power. It works only at an efficiency of 50% and it has a certain self-discharge and also a battery can trigger a event which blasts out all the power stored and all the batteries connected to one grid and cause a fire. Two things will happen. Not only a fire will happen but also the explosive explosion will da do damage. So the more power there is the bigger the explosion. That's if your power grids get too, can get too large, these explosions can be really, really dangerous. So long story short, always put down your batteries somewhere where they don't do too much damage if they go for this spontaneous discharge event, because there's, apart from modded content, nothing you can do against that. But don't you be too afraid about that. The power discharge event is not that super deadly. You just have to take care of it when it happens. Like this is a really bad situation to drop your battery. If you're really, really paranoid, you can just drop them like that. And if you're super paranoid, you can also do it like that. And then nothing bad can happen. But I, I personally made the experience that you don't need to be too careful with batteries. They are absolutely useful in combination with wind turbines and 
solar panels. These are the next technology I want to talk about. A solar panel is the second way of producing power without any further ingredients. And as you see here, of course, during the nighttime, it doesn't produce any energy and it will only come in line during the daytime. Wind turbines, they work also during the nighttime, as we see here, and can charge up batteries. So a solar generator produces 1,700 watts during the daytime. And I personally consider them as the most reliable and wonderful green energy producers the game has to offer. Wind turbines are, as you see them here, in the baseline electricity tree, so they are a little bit more random, a little bit more difficult to use, whereas the solar generator only has one weakness, and that's a eclipse event. Nothing else. One thing is worth mentioning though, wind turbines have a constant 100% power output during storm events, like rainy thunderstorms or such. If you ever run across a event which gives you like rainy weather for days, wind turbines will go crazy during these days. Just worth mentioning. Now, solar panels have been talked about. Let's go to the next power and that's gonna be, give me a sec, the water mill generator. The water mill generator is a little bit, well, underplayed, I, I want to say, at least for me. To use it, you need to settle on a tile which already has a piece of river and on river tiles, or I don't know if they are also usable on water tiles, let's check it out. I never tried actually. The water mill generator just has to live in these areas and as we see here, we don't have any um, chance to install it, but not because of the water, but because of the mud around this thing, because the generator can't be built there. Let's turn on the terrain affordance, you see here, this is all red blotting out the construction of the water mill generator and pretty much every body of water is secured like that to avoid to divert you from building the water mill generators here whereas the river tiles they are open for business so the water mill is quite simply said you just need to hover over an area until it turns green place it down and then it produces a steady supply of 1100 watts period you can't just Plot, blot down a few more, but as you see here, they should not go any into each other because now turbulence from other water mill, that's bad. So they are limited in means of, well, you need to find a proper tile, but beyond that, they are wonderful methods of power acquisition that just don't have any troubles whatsoever. You will need to use waterproof conduits though to run them here through the water because the regular ones won't work. Also keep in mind, pretty much everything electric, except for generators and such, shouldn't be put into the outside areas because once it starts raining, they, they short circuit nonstop and cause fires. All right, water mill generators. Wonderful thing if you're living on the right spot. Now, last but not least, the king of power generation, the geothermal generator. A lot of players prefer these over everything else, me included. So if you look them here, look up, look them up here, they need a pretty heavy research first. And you need to look for a, here, a steam geyser. You just plot down this thing there, and that's that. It produces horrendously much energy, but a few things are worth mentioning. Always put walls around these. Because if you don't, raiders just uh, go there and slap that thing down. As long as it's behind walls, the raiders have no clue that it's there and it's really easy to secure them like that. I've never ever had the issue that raiders were attacking my steam, my geothermal generators this way. It's foolproof. They'll only attack this thing if somebody hides in there and they see them hiding. But worth mentioning, this room heats up to tremendous amounts of temperature. If you look at the right, bottom right um, corner here, they heat up to 150 to 300 degree. And if you don't leave this little spot here open, the heat can be sometimes so high that the wooden doors uh, catches fire. Just worth 
mentioning. The downside of the geothermal generators is you need those steam geysers and sometimes they are really really far away and drawing power conduits just like that can be sometimes a real pain. So here for example that. This is quite a lot of work but the good side about geothermal power it's free once it's built up it doesn't it doesn't uh, fluctuate it's constant and it's a lot so overall I would always prefer geothermal if I can my next preference is always solar and then after that either wind or water I do avoid these generators as much as I can because I could personally consider them as very inefficient in terms of full fuel usage and work amount but they are really really good to kickstart your power generation at the beginning of your colony when you don't have any batteries when you don't have solar generators researched and so such things they really do matter but in the end and that's uh, going to summarize this tutorial now the way of power production should always be focused around your situation you are right in uh, your situation you are right now sorry and that means i've played for example in an extreme desert environment before i had access to batteries and yet still i put up some wind turbines and powered my freezer with it because i figured it might be that i don't have a constant power supply for my freezer but if my food gets refrigerated like 50 percent of the time this does increase the shelf time even if it's not perfect so same goes for wind and solar without batteries if you don't have the resources or the technology it gives you open windows of time where you can do your work at the benches or such things don't think that these power generators mandatorily require the usage of batteries that's not true you just need to play around these things a little bit more interactively instead of just taking power as a thing that's present the last thing i want to talk about is the power switch it's a rather rarely used thing. It's simply, its use is simply that if you do this, it turns off all the connected power around. Um, it, it turns off the complete connected power grid. There's just nothing being powered here anymore. If we flick on the switch of this thing, not connected to power. Wait a sec. Did I do it wrong here? So, long story short, behind the power switches, I rarely use them, if not never at all. It's just a thing where I personally think flicking the switch on your own machines is way better. The power switch only is necessary if you have certain areas of your colony which you rarely use, but I gotta say, I'm playing RimWorld for almost 2,000 hours now and I never used to switch a single time. Just to tell you something about that. <laughs> Anywho, that summarizes the tutorial. I'd say there's nothing more to... I don't know much more to tell you about this topic, so feel free to ask away in the comment section if you still have any questions. I'd be more than happy to answer them. And of course, if you feel like, man, you did forget something, place it down in the comments as well because I feel like this is not a knowledge competition I'm more than happy if you guys come up with ideas I haven't come up with because I might have a lot of experience with this game but I still keep learning something new every time I play it for a longer while so leave this video a thumbs up if it was helpful for you also consider dropping a subscription onto my channel you will be notified if you turn on the bell of all the new content I create. And of course, have a wonderful time, enjoy gaming, and see you soon. Bye-bye.